For the last time of asking, please use the right feed addresses. All my feeds changed last November. Here's the new one. All addresses should have stevelitchfield.com in them. Believe it or not, every show takes about 15 to 20 hours to put together, from researching, to writing, to filming, to dubbing, to uploading, coding the website. It just takes so much time. If I had no other commitments, maybe I could go weekly. But with other writing work and family commitments and a normal life, I just can't do it without having a heart attack. So fortnightly it is. If you could help keep the phone show and the phone to chat going, then I very much appreciate it. Here's the URL. Thanks a lot. Well, it was a spot that gave decent natural lighting, or as decent as you can get in the UK winter, while well, being nice and quiet. Indoors here for crystal clear sound. And here is my new high-tech studio setup. The heart out twit in their million pound new studio. We're talking 18 quid worth of white canvas. Tell me what you think anyway. Right, on with the show. Yes, yes, another show, another QWERTY flagship, but it's on yet another smartphone platform, so I hope you'll forgive me. This is the HTC 7 Pro running Windows Phone 7. It's as chunky, 16 millimetres thick, and as heavy, a whopping 185 grams, as the Android running Desire Z, but the mechanism is totally different. Watch this. You slide up the screen to reveal the keyboard, but the whole thing is heavily sprung, so that at the end of the slide, the screen gets popped up at about 30 degrees, with the front of the display dipping down into a hidden pit, so that the topmost row of the five-row keyboard is still easily accessible. It's an interesting design and could have really worked had it not been for HTC's usual sloppy tolerances in their build. Have a look at this side-to-side -side wobble on the slide mechanism. Almost terrific. And again, I have to mention the uh, solid hinges on the its competitors, in this case, the uh, Nokia E7, a good example of how to build a hinge that's absolutely uh, rock solid. As with the Desire Z, the 7 Pro's mechanism doesn't really inspire any confidence for longevity. Every single time you open or close it, because of grinding slightly and wobbling slightly, you're going to cringe, which is a shame. The keyboard is really quite good, with white on black legends, thankfully after the Desire Z disaster, but it's all rather marred by a cheap and nasty single micro switch here under the space bar. Hit the space key away from dead centre and there's just no key movement, no click, no key press registered. Sorry HTC, but that's simply poor design. Away from the hinge and keyboard, we're talking bog standard HTC hardware, so average 5 megapixel camera. Here are some example stills taking good light. There's also LED flash. Uh, despite the fake speaker grills on the front of the 7 and Pro top and bottom here, the actual loudspeaker is on the back, an excruciatingly tinny, scratchy and quiet. This is a loud bit of Pink Floyd and yet it's quiet and horrible. This is full volume by the way, absolutely full volume. It's just disappointing. Also disappointing is the 3.6 inch LCD screen that's nowhere near as clear and contrasty as OLED indoors and washes out even more outdoors. Uh, here's the 7 Pro next to its rival, the Nokia E7 in full sunlight. The use of Windows Phone 7 imposes a restriction of its own, of course, with there being no micro SD card slot here. Though in fairness, the um, Nokia E7 and, and all iPhones are in much the same boat here. The Review 7 Pro came with only 8 gigabytes built in, of which only 6.5 were available which is patently not enough for almost everyone watching this, but you can apparently get a 16 gigabyte version in some markets. The hardware is not all bad though, the battery cover is stainless steel and exudes class, though to get it off you have to open the keyboard here to get a fingernail under. The uh, prominent screw on the back, by the way, is either a cosmetic affectation or just unfortunately placed. I love the way the uh, camcorder, by the way, shoots 720p video with continuous autofocus. It's Quite usable footage too. Here's a clip. So this is test video footage on a sunny winter morning here in the UK on the HTC 7 Pro. Uh, autofocus in theory. Let's look at the audio quality and the video quality in 720p. There's something of a propensity for excessive wind noise thanks to the end-facing microphone as you just saw and heard. Still, Better than expected, even if Windows Phone does exist on reverting all camera settings to defaults every single blessed time, which means that many people will be ending up shooting video at VGA without realising their 720p setting has been inconveniently forgotten by the OS five seconds before. 
Windows Phone 7 is what it is, the usual triumph of eye candy over actual functionality. Never mind the fact it still hasn't got copy and paste six months after launch. There are actually bigger issues here with the platform and with its implementation. The biggest single showstopper is the absence of multitasking for anything which isn't hard coded into the OS. I'm going to start up the, uh, the podcast player here. I say start up with a pointed reason. Let's go to the phone show chat and start it playing. Anything you're doing in the foreground will come to a grinding halt when you press the Windows key to do something else. Here we are, phone show chat. Let's press the Windows key and the application terminates. And this happens to every app over and over and over again. I don't want to bore you with the same multitasking rant again. The 7 Pro does introduce another serious issue. Over half the apps and views in Windows Phone 7 haven't yet been written to allow for anything other than portrait use. So you get the crazy situation where, by even with the keyboard open, you're rotating the open phone from side to side following the whims of the OS. There are even some screens, as here, where artistically placed vertical text from a portrait mode display ends up upside down on the screen when used in open out mode. It's just crazy. Yes, this is something of a cosmetic issue, but for all its much heralded usability, Windows Phone lets itself down badly when it comes to portrait to landscape inflexibility. <laughs> I do like Windows Phone 7 as an OS. I can see its potential, which is just as well, since Nokia has signed up to use it from next year onwards. I can only hope that Nokia's engineers are bringing a really long shopping list of things to fix to Microsoft's table. There's a lot to do in 2011. HTC have made some additions to the basic Windows Phone system. There's their trademark weather lookup and compulsory animation. You have to watch it every single time. There's an improved HD YouTube player, which I liked, and a graphic equalizer plugin. In much the same way as the iPhone, a Windows Phone isn't a totally standalone device. You can't beam things off and onto it. You can't plug it into any computer as a USB drive. Instead, you're reliant on the supplied Zoom desktop software, a monstrosity which takes about two years to install under Windows and requires a restart to manage your music and media. At least contacts and calendar are more standalone, syncing directly to Microsoft's and other cloud services. In fact, that's all you can do, because as far as I can see, there's no way of syncing directly to Microsoft's own Office software, e.g. Outlook, sitting on the PC beside the phone. Most files end up being emailed around, and even here the OS is crippled and that the built-in email client here only accepts photos as attachments. We'll tap on the attachment icon and photo gallery is launched. Unbelievably, you can't attach a pocket office document to email one of these on a per file basis. You have to go into each one and send from within the document. I could go on, but it's still unfair for me to keep slamming Windows Phone 7, uh, even just Windows Phone as a platform, even after six months. It's clearly not finished. At the current rate of progress, it'll be finished and usable by about the end of 2011, just in time for Nokia and others <laughs> new lineups to launch. In the HTC 7 Pro's case, add in some unremarkable hardware and you've got a communicator that will only really please the unadventurous. Dear phone show viewers, I think I know you well enough to suggest that you will steer clear of this one. As you'll have gathered, I've been waiting eagerly for Android 2.3 on my Google Nexus One. I wanted the pure Android experience and Google came good, releasing Android 2.3.3 at long last. I thought you might like a glimpse into how it all went. Being too impatient to wait for the over-the-air rollout, I will use the direct download version from androids.clients.google.com. The exact URL is too long to post here and may change, but Google itself will likely find the candidates, usually via a post via the clever people at XDA developers. The file name will be something like some number GRI40 from some other long number .zip. I renamed it to just update.zip, as is standard with these things, and copied it across to the root of my phone's SD card in mounted mode. I could have used a card reader as well. Uh, next, I powered down the Nexus One and held down the volume down button as I powered the phone back on. This brings up the Nexus One's bootloader. I then used the volume down button again to highlight recovery and then press the power button to select it. Once you see a big exclamation mark icon, I pressed the power and volume up buttons at the same time. You are taking notes, I hope. <laughs> now I use the trackball to scroll down to and select apply SD card update zip, upon which I saw the sequence shown in the photo here. And I was done. Note that the device did reboot a couple of times while it sorted its OS out, but I didn't lose any apps or files. And here's Android 2.3.3 in action, very slick and smooth. 